Hi there folks, my name's Overwing24 and welcome to the first video of 2015. So we're going to start off this year with a bit of a bang, well, a bit of a conversational bang more than anything else. Uh, so we're going to touch on uh, one of the last videos that I made for 2014. Um, we're going to pick up because I've been reading some of the comments, quite a lot of the comments for the uh, video there. And it was the video, of course, the one introducing FSX for Steam, so the FS, um, Microsoft Flight Simulator 10 Steam Edition uh, produced by Dovetail Games. Uh, brought to us on our favourite digital distribution platform, Steam. So I want to go through and and go through some of the things that have been popping up on the threads and some of the things that I keep hearing in uh, various TeamSpeaks and forums that I'm part of. And I want to address a couple of concerns and issues and things like that. And and, and again, just reiterate my point and my thoughts and points, especially now that it's it's been out a month and we've had a bit of a chance that the hype started dying down and we've started you know picking over it again a bit more and and we can see a few more things here and there. So, mm. all right. Look, first off, let's let's start off with answering a few questions. So, the big one that keeps getting asked is, will my insert name of add-on here work? So, look, the answer to that is most likely yes. However, you need to check with the individual distributor. So. For the freeware ones, most of the freeware stuff, or well, the freeware stuff that I've tested so far, um, has all worked no problem at all. My setup is running DX9. Uh, the pre freeware that I've been checking, so I've been checking Dino, Cadeneo's aircraft, they all work fine, beautifully, no problems at all. Uh, on there, I've checked a couple of Manfred Yan's brilliant works as well. So I've got his Basler BT67 and his C47 Skytrain all installed. Uh, absolutely fine, no problems at all. Um, I've got a couple of tweaks 737s in there. Um, look, I've got quite a few things in there. I've got a couple of things I also backported from P3D uh, in there as well. Uh, and they are working absolutely fine, no problems at all, exactly as they should be. So it seems that the vast majority of freeware aircraft, and again, talking to other members of the community, you've tested all sorts of things. They've tested various uh, helicopters, fast movers, fast jets. Um, the FSX Blue Angels have confirmed that their F-18, C and D, uh, both their Blue Angels variant and their fleet variant, do work fine uh, in the Steam Edition as well. So it's quite common that, that your freeware stuff over there, out, out there, is predominantly working fine. Now. The exception of that to that, of course, was things like the Ferry Rotodyne um, or anything, any freeware that required the use of the FSU IPC by Pete Dawson. Now, that sort of brings me into the next part of the topic here, uh, FSU IPC. So FSU IPC has become a pretty critical piece of kit for all flight simmers, whether they be FSX, FS9 or... Um, pretty much, yeah, either title, um, or P3D users over the last few years, uh, whether it be the freeware version or the payware version. Now, the fact remains is that initially at release, no, it didn't work. Um, however, Pete was very graciously, he was supposed to be going holidays, yet he still managed to look over the code and compile it and put out an addition before he went for Christmas. Uh, so we did have something, it was a Bit of a bit of a buggy one, but it, we had something to start using and uh, start testing with, and that was great. Um, he's since released two more revisions of that, so we're now up to uh, 4.398C, I believe. Uh, 4.938C is what we're up to now. So that's the latest variant that's just been released a, well, a couple of days ago from the, the rest of this video, uh, which introduces a few bug fixes, and yeah, a, again. All the features have been tested. Now, I've been testing this particular thing as well because for me, I use a couple of programs like I use um, Plan G um, and KCARS on a separate computer um, as well as using Air Hauler as well. So for me, FSU IPC was kind of pretty important for me. So I wanted to make sure that it worked and now it does. It works seamlessly, beautifully. I've got the white FS works fine, no problems at all. Um, my FSU IPC works fine for uh, connecting my stick and throttles and everything else. So um, yeah, a lot of people who are saying, oh, this is such an insert generic thing here, doesn't work because FSU IPC doesn't work. FSU IPC now works. So you can't use that as an excuse to not get Steam Edition now. So there's probably a big one. So that was a big thing that was stopping a lot of people moving over was they're like, oh, my add-on's going to work, I'm not going to work, and you know what, it's your freeware, fine. Your vast majority, I believe, and from again, from what the feedback I'm getting of your payware is going to work as well. Now, a couple of the big names though. So, um, of course, PMDG. Now, PMDG are pretty much the 
uh, be all and end all when it comes to airline simulators. And you know what? They do some amazing work. It's I'll be honest, it's not of interest to me. Tube liners are not a thing for me, but I respect people who do love them. And to PMDG, you guys do a fantastic, incredibly detailed work. You really do. Absolutely amazing. It's just not my personal cup of tea. But big thing was for them, a lot of their stuff with the way they interface with the simconnect.dll uh, meant it, re it has rendered that, and the fact that the Steam Edition has generated a new version and compiled it differently um, than it was previously compiled under FSX Gold and Deluxe Editions uh, has meant that PMDG products um, currently do not work with Steam Edition. Now PMDG have um, acknowledged this and they are now confirmed they are working on a fix for it. They hope to have a fix out within the next sort of um, month or two um, for their products to bring them over to make them fully compatible with Steam Edition. Um, they were a little grumpy that they weren't um, contacted pre-release by Dovetail, um, but the fact remains is that, if, let's be honest, Microsoft never worked with a third party provider when they were releasing stuff, so, you know, sorry, but, you know, stop getting your knickers in a twist because at the end of the day, Microsoft would never have consulted with you when they were releasing something new. You were expected to adapt to them and you know, at the end of the day, a developer doesn't have to do that. It's up to third-party developers to adapt to them. So, anyway, that's my personal two cents worth. Probably not the best opinion, uh, best thing to raise this uh, particular opinion in. But you know what? Meh, eh, never mind. Anyway, back on to important news. So, uh, PMDG have said yes, they are going to support it. It will be a future. They are working on the patch, but they will fix it. Um, VRS simulations. Now, VRS simulations are very well known for their creation of their superbug and also of their TAC pack um, weapons and training tool for FSX. Um, have said that currently their product does not support Steam Edition. They will, however, have confirmed they will definitely be supporting it in the future. However, at the moment, it is not their priority. Their priority at the moment is to bring their uh, VRS products uh, fully and make them fully compatible with P3D. Um, that's the current project they are working on, and so therefore any work on a Steam Edition fix and adaptability has been pushed to the back of their sort of, you know, has been pushed back behind the P3D functionality work. So um, they have, as I said, the important thing is they have confirmed they will be supporting it, they will be patching it and making it compatible, uh, just not yet. So it is something that we will see coming in the future, just not for the short term coming up. All right, uh, A2A. Uh, A2A do work fine, um, however it does have to be a clean install. So a lot, a lot of the things that I'm noticing here, and probably, and probably should have prefaced that before when I said a lot of pay and freeware work, it does have to be fresh installs, can't just be copy and paste your whole directories and stuff from your old FSX, because if you do that you'll lose a lot of the good work that Dovetail have done to make your simulator better. So, um, HOA products do work uh, as long as you do it as a clean installation uh, into your Steam Edition directory, uh, whether that be whether you're just running Steam Edition only or whether you're running a dual install uh, machine. Captain Sim C130, same thing, uh, just do a clean install of that one. Uh, conflicting information about that one, I personally just uh, copied and pasted mine over. It's probably the one thing I just don't know, I said don't do that, but you know, I'm only copying aircraft engages, so. I did that, uh, however, I've talked to other people who've said they've done just a quick clean install, um, dual install machine, works fine, no problems at all. Just their ACE uh, manager does not work, uh, however, the actual aircraft does, so that's the main important. We can put our own liveries in um, custom. Alright, now, the other huge ones, we, when it comes to scenery, pretty much uh, the be all and end all is the guys from Orbix. So, it's the be all and end all for simulation scenery for FSX P3D these days, uh, other guys at Orbix. So, big question, do their products work with Steam Edition? Okay, so, again, a yes and a no answer here. Um, officially, Orbix products with Steam Edition will install and will work majority of them if you're running the latest installer. So the newest downloaded installer from your uh, from Flight Sim Store, uh, you just choose uh, it, but it'll only work if you are running FSX Steam Edition only. If you're running dual installs, it has a lot of issues because it saves your primary install in the registry file and then won't often won't allow you to customize your directory. So it's possible, but it's pretty messy. Um, a couple of the users over at the Orbix forums have 
listed ways to actually switch between them and make them work. However, it includes it's it's all about messing around with your registry file. And to be honest, I've read through it. The instructions are great, but I am not going to go anywhere near it until Orbix have come out with their official support. So, uh, Orbix. Speaking of which, Orbix have confirmed that they will officially be supporting the Steam edition of FSX. They will be putting making their products compatible with it. Um, at the moment, the discussion is now turned to whether they do it as a switch program. Uh, something that they used to have back when um, when P3D version 1.1.1.x was out. Uh, they used to have a little toggle program which allowed you to just install it once and use it in both simulators. Uh, they're looking at doing something like that um, as opposed to doing a modifying the installers yet again because they've only just finished doing triple installers for most of their products so they don't particularly want feel like making a quadruple installer and I don't blame them at all for not wanting to do that, I really don't. Uh, so yeah, most likely we'll be seeing a toggle program um, and again, the probably only other major thing is, is that a couple of people who have got it working uh, and have installed it into their Steam edition of FSX have said that there is a couple of DLLs, their Object Flow and Object Flow SAK DLLs are not certified for use with this edition again due to the way it was been recompiled so therefore any products that or any components that use that so a lot of their animated sceneries and stuff like that are not going to work at the moment um, because of that DLL uh, incompatibility but again something that they're working on they will be fixing it fairly fairly soon so th that's really good news overall that's, that's all really good news we've got your, your major front runners um, Doing that. Oh, oh god, I've forgotten two of the most important ones, so I do apologise. Two of the most important ones out there. Uh, so, uh, Iris Simulations aircraft. Iris Simulations aircraft work fine, no problems at all. Um, you can install it if FSX Steam Edition is just your only, if you've only got Steam Edition, or if you've got Dual, um, just when you rerun the installer and point it towards your Steam Edition directory. That's it, and you're all good, you're set, ready, right to go. Absolutely work perfectly, including the beta text driver. Absolutely gorgeous. Anyway, uh, and the other one, of course, is Active Sky Next and uh, Rex Textures. So, Active Sky Next um, does not work. Uh, so, Active Sky Next has said that, yeah, it's not compatible, they're working on a fix. They just posted an update uh, a couple of days ago saying that their the issue is with their connectivity module, um, the one that actually connects the weather engine to the simulator. That is not working and does not playing nicely with the rec recompiled version of Steam Edition uh, for FSX Steam Edition. So um, it is going to be a bit more of a wait than we were hoping for, but they are working digitally to get it fixed. It will be coming. Again, we've just got to be patient and get it working again. Uh, Lastly, of course, is uh, Rex, uh, Rex Textures. So um, now I personally have only utilized the Rex Textures 4. Rex Textures 4 works fine, no problems at all. Um, the great thing about Rex uh, Texture Direct is the fact that it is designed from the ground up to use across multiple simulators. So all you do is you just customize the directory, install directory that it's going to. Instead of pointing it to your normal Steam directory, you point it to your Steam Edition directory. That's it, and it's done. Um, what the video you've been watching while I've been nattering on here has the Rex textures installed, so looks amazing, looks awesome. So yeah, uh, that's pretty much it now. So as I said, this is all really, really good news. Um, we're seeing all the major developers come out and say, yes, it's working, yes, we're getting on board, and that is absolutely incredible to see, absolutely lovely, really, really awesome to see. Um, I just want to answer probably some of the people who sort of saying, oh, it's not working, you should have worked straight out of the box. You know what? FSX came out in 2007. That's a long time in software development. That's a really long time. We're talking seven, eight years ago, guys. So the fact that it's going to take a couple of weeks or a couple of months to get your add-ons into this new incarnation of it, suck it up! Cheapers! Like, seriously. The stat that we, the state that we had our FSX in, our classic FSX, FSX in, um, by the time Steam Edition came out, it took seven years to get there. Okay, the fact that it's only taken you know two months now, and vast majority of the stuff that we want is already working, and the rest is coming within the next couple, month or two. That's incredibly awesome. So shut up, all those haters out there. Shut up. Be grateful. Acknowledge the fact that. This sim has what Dovetail have done. They've reinvigorated this title. They've done a lot of bug fixes. You know, on the surface it may look the same, but um, there's been some really great benchmark testing. And I'm going to put some links to the some benchmark testing, which I found absolutely amazing to watch because um, I'd experienced the exact same issues that he was describing in the videos of getting constant oh uh, out of memory errors, OOMs, just 
pinging, and just you hear that ping, you just went, that's it, it's over, my sim's going to die in about 30 seconds. And it always did. But you don't get that in Steam Edition, because it handles memory so much better. So, thank you, Dovetail. You've done amazing work, so thank you so much for that. So, to everybody else out there, the reason why people are moving to Steam Edition is that it is more stable, um, it doesn't give you the OOMs, you don't have to tweak it as much, you still have to do a few tweaks, but you don't have to tweak it as much. A lot of the tweaks that we've used to doing are actually in there already, and they've made some coding changes under the hood. So, you know what? This is awesome, especially if you got it for five bucks. <laughs> really awesome. Um, better deal. But rest assured, your add-ons will work. It might take a little bit of time to get them all up and running, but they are going to work for you. So that's my first little rant there. Um, the second part I want to pick up in is the multiplayer experience. Now, the multiplayer experience, um, a lot of people will fly in Flight Simulator because of the multiplayer experience. So it's, yeah, there's community, communities that have found it out there purely on doing that. Um, things like Sim and stuff like that, you know, they all work with that kind of stuff. So, you know what, that's really, really important as well. The multiplayer is a very important um, scenario and piece as well. Now, with that, multiplayer stability at launch was, let's be honest, it was atrocious. And, yep, and, yeah, that it was shocking. It was absolutely shocking. However, a um, couple of minor tweaks and stuff like that since uh, release, and we've got a major patch coming up very shortly, but stability has improved a lot. Uh, I personally host a pretty much 24-7 server um, with the MS Flights uh, in partnership with msflights.net as their Australian host. So my server's been running, was running perfectly fine and stable for four days. Uh, I had to take it offline just to do an do a update on it, and it's been running uh, fine ever since for another three days. So, yeah, it's a lot more stable than it was at launch. So people are worried about it. You know what, I believe me, when it first launched, it was, yeah, pretty, it was nightmarish. It was disastrous. But it has improved. It has got better, and it is going to continue to get better. It's going to grow and improve. We've got a dedic we've got a team that is actually working on this at the moment, which is something we haven't seen you know, from Microsoft for a really, really long time. So there you go. All right, folks. Well, look, that wraps up my little rant for today. Uh, as I said before, welcome to 2015. Uh, Going to be lots more exciting videos coming up this year. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. Thank you for letting me answer your questions, and thank you for uh, you asking your questions and putting your comments in my previous videos. As always, I look forward to seeing your responses and your links and whatever uh, in the comments field section down below. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to the video and the channel here uh, for all your updates on simulation news and gaming and all sorts of fun things. And you can also keep in touch with me on Facebook and on Twitter, just search NovaWing24. Alright folks, thanks very much for watching, take care, stay safe to all, and we'll see you later in 2015. Bye for now.